Hello, good evening. Welcome to Making It Monday. Lizzie here. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just in case I forget who I am. <laughs> well, you know, it's easier to read on the screen here than look down. Oh, yes, that's who I am. I've got, I've remembered now. <laughs> Are you all well? I'm sorry I'm in my um, hoodie, but it's quite well, it was, it was quite chilly in my room, so I thought I'd just wear my hoodie. I'm probably going to get too hot now. <laughs> oh, so, good evening from uh, from Facebook and um, good evening from YouTube. It's lovely to see you here as normal. It's just so super. Thank you very much for joining. We're, at, we're on Project um, 55. <laughs> I laugh because I think, oh my goodness, are we sure we're on Project 55? Uh, yes, we are. So, um, yes, so welcome to the oh I wish you know I wish I could get YouTube up straight away it'd be such fun it'd be such fun if I could um <laughs> oh here we are I should wait I should be more patient there we are it looks like I'm sitting in a coal hole anyway how are you are you okay is life treating you well have you been poorly if you've been poorly please get well soon if you've been not if you've not been poorly well done <laughs> well done because there's some grotty colds going around isn't there i think they're calling it the covid cold and uh yeah it's pretty grotty so hopefully you're all healthy and and well and uh going to enjoy the next hour let's hope right first things first um i have got it's 56 here patsy it does it is that cold yeah it's cold isn't it oh that's cold 56 <laughs> i just realized yes <laughs> anyway um first things first i have a couple of giveaways to do on this page anyway and i've got i must 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 pick out the names for those um tomorrow life just takes over sometimes i don't get time however this evening i have got another giveaway which of course as you know it's the um the, the kim kit and the Kim kit, uh, those that of you that follow me regularly will know that it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little package of delight <laughs> full of old worn and wash fabrics um, created, put together, let's say, by Kim Porter. Um, her company is called Worn and Washed. You can follow her mainly on Instagram. That's where she normally sort of hangs out. And it's um, Kim Porter... Um, Kim Porter Fabrics, I think she is. Anyway, so this is the giveaway tonight. Now then, the, the giveaway will only be available to those that comment. <laughs> so if you don't normally comment, just say hello, just say hi, just say something. <laughs> hello, it's Monday. I'll look at YouTube and I'll look at Facebook later and we'll pick a winner um, from, from all of the comments. So the more comments you make, um, the more chance you've got of winning a Kim kit and um, right at the end if we've got a moment I will show you the contents of this one because this is the one I opened the other day. I don't want to open another one. They're too precious but it's full of um, reclaimed fabrics uh, and some Liberty as well which is appropriate because I'm using Liberty tonight um, and buttons and lace and bits and bobs. It's absolute little treasure chest. And it's great for crumb quilting. And again, that's kind of appropriate for what I've done uh, for um, Betty this evening. So the more comments you make, the more chance you've got of uh, getting picked out to win this Kim kit. So let's put that to one side. Please remind me, I'll try and pick up the, the post to say, show us the contents, Lizzie. Show us the contents, because I probably will forget. Um, the other thing is, don't forget you. Um, this is this is our lanyard for La La Land. It says La La Land 2022 on it, and obviously, if you're going to buy your ticket, um, you'll get a little badge to actually slip inside with your name on. <laughs> Maybe not as big as mine, and not handwritten, or well, possibly. Um, but you need to wear your lanyard, um, and that way. Um, uh, we'll know who you are basically because <laughs> it'll be because the thing is you'll know us we won't know you that's the, that's the trick the other thing is if you make yourself Mabel which was from last week which is a luggage tag then you'll be in for a chance of another prize from me for making and wearing Mabel so obviously Mabel has to be on your um, crafty tote your bag whatever you decide to bring with you on the day 
Um, so if you've made Mabel from last week, then, and I've, we've got two, do you remember? We made those. Um, then you'll be in with a chance of winning uh, another prize. So that's Mabel. So please, 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 if you haven't already downloaded Mabel, go get her and make yourself a M Mabel label tag. And then when you come to La La Land next May, you can be in with a prize. And then, of course, if you make Abby's Bow Band, which, of course, is another Making It Monday project. Can't remember which number now, but it was a little while ago. Um, then you'll be in with a f for getting a prize from her. I know it's all prizes and prizes and lovely things. Right. So um, tonight we're going to be making Betty and Betty is my little I've got her attached to Keely, actually. <laughs> There's a reason for this. Um, so um, Betty is a little coin purse um, and she has a loop. Um, I'll, let me put you on the overhead because you'll be able to see her a little bit better. Um, I'll see if I can get in the middle because I might have to move the camera. But you can see she's attached to my Keely <laughs> because there's a special key on there. Um, that special key I don't really want to lose. So I'm kind of keeping everything together. Um, I think this is one of the little badges that my grandchildren bought me. Um, love you, Grandma. Well, well of course. Um, <laughs> and I love, I've kept that. That's, I've had that forever. So anyway they are all they are all attached to betty and of course if you've got a nice big ring like this then it's easy to attach betty to anything really um and you need like a um, yeah, maybe not, uh, you could put a sw on a swivel clip or something like that as long as you can get it through the loop or attach the loop whatever it is before you actually stitch it because that's where it kind of joins tiny little purse really super cute i love 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 betty and um there's a story about why she's called betty i'll tell you later um tiny little um zip as well nice easy make um if you want to hand stitch some of this i i actually recommend it to be honest although i did it on my machine but it's it's fairly tricky to get round there on the machine but I'll do that tonight um, and then you can decide whether you're going to do that or whether you're going to actually um, hand stitch it round and it would look lovely hand stitched it really would and and luckily it doesn't look too bad on the other side <laughs> anyway like I say she's attached to Keely because Keely was such a useful make and I, I have Keely with me all the time because obviously it has all my keys in there uh, for the car and the house and because my car is a keyless car it's handy to have them in a bag that I can easily find inside another bag because it's so bright so all of those kind of go together now although that's not quite the same <laughs> color tones not too bad not too bad if you can hear music there's something outside that's really loud it might be Father Christmas actually I've got a sneaky suspicion he was coming down with his sleigh today um, and he was actually coming around the village when we live up a really quiet cul-de-sac so if it is santa father christmas i hope he can turn around those reindeers can be pretty pretty you know skittish um trust me i live in newmarket we have a lot of skittish uh, how, uh, houses horses <laughs> we have a lot of skittish horses in newmarket okay so let's pop um betty over there i might retrieve her in a little while i've got my bits cut out but i'm going to actually show you how to make your bias binding because i'm not sure if we've ever done that before it's it's kind of um, a little bit of an upgrade for a mim pattern to have bias binding but i, th I figured it would be worth it i figured it would be worth it so before we start don't forget to comment to say that you would like to win one of kim's kits and like i said more comments um that you make the more chance that you've got of winning this gorgeous little kim kit there so that's up to you so if we have a look at what i've done already i'll put i'll get you over onto my mat it's a pity i'm a little bit wonky i might have to change it just bear with me while i just change my camera and then i can actually Oops, I can actually move, move my camera a little bit because it's a wee bit wonky. There we are. That's a little bit better. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, um, like I say, I'm back now. I had to climb up and you don't really need to see tomorrow's washing. You really don't. Um, <laughs> so on my mat, we've obviously got the pattern. 
which is oops which is in the uh, download and then I've got some scrap fabric here now look I want you to have a look at this because this is made out of Liberty scraps and it's crumb quilting it's just little scraps that have been stitched together and you can see the seam lines here and on here that's across there down there lots of little pieces tiny little piece there look and I just thought it would be fun to use some of my crumb quilting that's I've used in demonstrations and it's, they're too small to do anything with but this is such a great project for it, it really is. So I've got my little pink zip as well and I've got this tiniest scrap of fabric, look I haven't even ironed it, this is how ridiculous it all is, I, I haven't even ironed it. But what we're going to do is we're going to make some bias out of that when we get to it. So although this is the tiniest scrap we only need about 12 inches of um, bias. So I'm going to make it out of this tiny little scrap of fabric which just shows that you don't need a lot to make bias. You really, really don't. Um, you don't, don't start thinking about using up whole fat quarter or something like that. It would be crazy. So um, what we're going to do is we'll follow the pattern as best I can because sometimes you know I deviate a little bit. Um, I'm putting my iron on. I'm getting my ironing mat. Just move my bits and bobs out of the way. And we're going to iron our two pieces and in the pattern which is over here um, there's the two pieces cut and I don't know if you can see it uh, my my printer is rubbish um, and I can't hardly see those two pieces but all that is is stabilizer so it's two outer pieces two pieces of stabilizer there is no lining if you want to line this and make a zip sandwich by all means do that but that's not my intention for this it, I, I wanted it to be quite soft and um, I just didn't want it cluttered up with lining but that's up to you so two pieces of outer two pieces of soft interfacing iron on um, we're in the UK we use G700 which is a really nice all-rounder then we've got so we need about a four inch zip that's too long anyway but it, it kind of hangs over the edge which is nice um, the first thing we're going to do is iron over a quarter of an inch on the straight edges so let's just get rid of that um, little piece so now my iron is, is heated up, I'll just give that another little press just to make sure it's all stuck to the, the interfacing. Um, and the other thing about doing a little bit of crumb quilting is sometimes um, you don't, you know, you need to, there's lots of seams. So there might well be gaps uh, where it hasn't caught the interfacing, but I'm not too worried about that. So you're going to fold over a quarter of an inch. We're not doing a zip sandwich. There's, you can if you want, you can st stitch it in the normal way if you want. I, gosh, I'm not going to stop you doing that. But this is quite a nice method of putting a zip in without too much stress. So we've got, another, you can see, a lovely, lovely pressed edge there. Same again with the other side. So just fold that over. Now next week, um, our Making It Monday pattern is going to be from a guest called Jill. And Jill's pattern, um, at the, at the, I can't tell you what the name is because she hasn't named it yet. <laughs> but um, <laughs> hopefully we'll, she'll give us a name in the next seven days. Um, and yeah, so it'll be it'll be um, Jill's pattern. Um, I would I will demonstrate unless Jill wants to. Um, interestingly look those fabrics match up that's not intentional well, there we are so the next thing to do is to actually it says to do the bias but we'll do that when we for the next bit when we get to it so all you're going to do and if you want to use your quilters tape by all means you're literally going to stitch one side down as near as you want to get to the zip um, and then the other side down so literally that's all you're doing all right, nothing complicated at all. Um, and you can see in the pattern, you end up with this sort of shape. And the reason why we've cut our zip longer is because we can get our zip slider way out of the way um, and it means less stress for you guys. So if you want to, you can put some quilters tape on there. Um, let's do that. So uh, if anybody has never used quilters tape, you'll, you'll see how fabulous it is. And I'm just laying that on the wrong side um, 
and I'll just peel that away. So give it a, a good squidge with your nail um, and then peel that away and you can see the glue and you see it glistening. And then all we do, I wonder if that was Santa. I'm quite excited now and I missed it. If it was, oh, I would have liked to have gone to see him. He was lovely, like, well, not last year, year before. Yeah, my, um, I, we took, um, I took my grandson to, to see Santa and he asked him what he would like for Christmas and he said a Lamborghini. Well, you would, wouldn't you? If you got any sense, you would. Now I'm going to stitch one down first and then I'll stick the other one on and stitch that down second, just like I've done in the pattern. You could, if you're feeling brave, um, stick these both down and then um, stitch them, you know, one after the other. But I'll keep that to one side. I might as well take the back off. And that's ready to then, we're going to stick it down like that, okay? So I'm going to bring the machine in. Let's just see if we can get some room. Uh, hold on. I've got a bag of bits here I was going to share with you. Well, not share with you. I was going to show you something. But I'll do it when I've stitched this together. So I'm going to get my machine in, which is actually poorly. This is my new machine, guys, and it's actually poorly. Let's just, I've got to move all my bits, just bear with. Um, yes, new machine, poorly. I know. Oh, Quilter's Tape is on my Amazon um, shop, Catherine. Yes, it is lovely. Um, and I think you'll find the link... Uh, in, in the Making It Monday group somewhere, I think it's in the um, uh, featured. I'm trying to think what the word is, featured. Right, so that's what we've got. All I've done is stuck it down. You can use pins if you want to, or don't have to use anything. It's only a tiny little bit. Why is it poorly, Shirley? Well, <laughs> I was having a fiddle. It's not my fault. <laughs> I was having a fiddle, and I wanted to swap out this this throat plate here right because on this machine i can swap the throat plate out and i can make it into a straight stitch only machine now you might say why why would you want to do that well the simple reason is that with a straight stitch throat plate you get one tiny little hole here i don't know if you can see with my where my stiletto is which means when you're stitching fine things like Betty's loop, the um, fabric and what have you doesn't go into the feed dogs. So having a straight stitch plate is actually quite useful. Um, the regular plate, like for a zigzag, would obviously have a really big, you know, a, a really big hole, if you like, um, seven, nine mil, um, to take the, the needle going from one side to the other. Um, so when I change this plate, which is the straight stitch plate, it's fine, perfectly fine. But when I put the zigzag plate on, if you like, the standard plate, it uh, it freezes up. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's lost a sensor somewhere in proceedings, which is a bit of a shame, really. Right, so I've stitched one side while we've nattered. There you go. So all I'm going to do is get my other piece, which is over here and I'm just going to stick it down. And a great thing about tape is that you can stick it so it matches the other side. So your, um, you know, the width, if you like, between the zip teeth and your piece of fabric is the same. So it's, uh, it's actually quite handy. And then we're just going to stitch down there just to stitch it down. So it's about, um, oh, drop my feed dogs. So it's about, well, if I was to measure it, sixteenth of an inch. Don't, don't do any bigger. It just looks ugly. Try and, you know, learn how to stitch close to the fold of a fabric and keep practicing. Keep practicing. Gosh, there's lots of comments tonight. Mind you, I did tell you <laughs> to comment. <laughs> there we go. Yes, Carol, they are quite useful, but, um, you know, it's a kind of a, is it a gadget and gizmo? I don't know, but it, it worked very well on, on Betty's um, little strap, which is what I wanted it for. Anyway, there we go. So that's where we've got to so far. Now then, 
let me switch you back whoops to the front <laughs> and uh, although the overhead and we'll just whoops there we go, I wasn't quite ready for you there and there's a couple of things I want to show you now we've got it to that stage um, there's I've done crumb quilting and I've done this deliberately because I love it I love Liberty fabrics and I love the combination of all the different colors together I love it um, but I have in my stash um, uh, I'm gonna regret this <laughs> a little bag that I bought from eBay which has like little scraps in it of old tablecloths look at that do you remember those girls do you remember granny or your mum always having tablecloths made like that um, little bits of lace uh, gosh look at that nice beautiful piece of lace there this is all mixed up with a bit of Liberty as well that I've been using um, but in here are loads and loads you'll see as I shift stuff around a bit of crocheted lace there look at that beautiful a bit of tablecloth um, bit there look can you see uh, lots of little scrappy bits and you can you know go to your local I don't know, thrift store charity shop and find tablecloths that are stained that are no good to anybody and uh, I'll keep that little bit there um, and you can reuse them for other projects right and it's just a nice little tip and we don't normally sort of do this sort of thing on a MIM but you, you know you're getting good now so I can sort of admit, get you advanced that's a nice leaf look so anyway look there we are so you've got the idea that you can have lots of little bits oh look at that and uh, they can get put onto in fact I quite like that so I'm going to put that to one side so I'm going to just bung those on the floor I will pick them up later you're not to worry now then the reason why I've picked those out is because if you've made your little purse you might want to decorate the front right you might want to put a monogram on there or do some embroidery it's a tiny little thing but it makes it a really doable easy project doesn't it but you could pick out all these little bits and if they're precious you can add them to your work so for instance we can cut this little flower out in fact I quite like that leaf with it so we'll keep the leaf in Hold on, let's get it. I've got my scissors caught. There we are. Um, and you can just use your free motion, maybe, or just your regular foot. Don't be frightened. Or just glue it. <laughs> and you can stick those down. Don't forget that's got to go the other way if that's because that's obviously upside down. Oops, there we go. And you can add little little things like that to a project. And and do you know what? It's not it's not too difficult a thing just to stitch those down and make it really pretty so I just wanted to show you that as an extra so um, I'll, I'm gonna do the bias in a minute I haven't forgotten because we need it um, <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is to actually fold this in half wrong sides together and we're going to pin our two sort of Half semicircles together okay so it's wrong sides together and yes I am right saying that <laughs> um, but pin this well because if you've cut this beautifully all this should line up lovely and your zip should sit look at that sits perfectly on the top doesn't it look gorgeous so just pin all this get it nice I'm gonna take my time with it there's no rush and you could honestly you could make these up in half an hour you know I have to um, fill the time in basically so that's if you look at the pattern that's what we've done wrong sides together pin both outer pieces so an eighth of an inch all the way around but not the zip so obviously we're going to trim this zip in a minute so we're going to start here we're going to go all the way around here and we're going to stop here and we're just helping ourselves keep our little purse together so I'm going to move my um, zip slider along and I'm going to cut my um, zip um, oh, oh I'll tell you what before we do that oh before we do that we need to stitch the zip now then um, because I haven't got a zigzag facility I'm actually going to hand stitch this and all I want to do is to sew these teeth together here 
So let's just keep tidy. So you know where it splits open, if I was to do that, you know where it splits open on one end. This end should be closed. This end, your, your legs will be uh, like that. So I really, really, really want to stitch those together and I'm going to use an embroidery thread. Now in the pattern, which number is it? Let's have a look. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it's, um, it's this one here. It's this one here. It shows you the zigzag across the zip okay and that is a good thing to do just make sure your needle goes either side of the zip teeth and the zigzag is brilliant it's almost like you want to put it on a satin stitch um, it's really good but I'm just going to hand stitch this together just so it doesn't wriggle I've, do you know I've got the biggest needle in the world here um, and a lot of this will be covered with the bias, so you're not to worry, it's just a few stitches. I like to use embroidery thread because it's so strong and I can use six strands um, and make it really strong. There we are, you don't have to do anything dramatic. Um, let's pop that back in my mouse. Um, and then we can trim. So keep your zip flat open and do your zigzag on the machine or do what I've done and just make sure that it you know it just keeps the teeth together you can see at the end there um, and that's how we want it to look like so that's um our purse put together we just need to do the eighth of an inch stitch all the way around there because that's what holds it together that's what helps us um just when we stitch the uh bias on it just helps us with the bias so let's bring the machine in <clears throat> oh, just take the zipper foot off, put our regular foot on. Um, let's just pop that on. That's it, come on, that's it. So um, now, if you want to, start a little bit away from the zip um, because some machines are a bit tricky for getting over the zip. So just be cautious of that. Um, and we're stitching an eighth of an inch, no more. And we're making sure that those two layers um, stay together. Okay, not too, not too fast. Take your time and remove your pins as you go. And just go all the way around. <clears throat> Gosh, those pins are sharp. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's just move my zip slider out of the way. Uh, are you all happy? So don't forget to comment if you want to be in with a chance of winning one of the Kim Porter kits. Um, because like I say, the more, the more comments you make, the better your chances of, of winning. So let's just snip the, the threads off. There we go. Oops, there we go. So can you see? I've stitched about an eighth of an inch. So not a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now we're going to make the bias. So this is where, if you've never made bias before, let's just get you on the right camera, um, then this is your moment to, to watch. <laughs> because it's not very often we have to make our bias from scratch, but it's, it's quite a good thing to do, especially if you're just using scrappy little bits like this. So first of all, I'm gonna iron iron my fabric and I've got a really old piece of uh, Liberty here again uh, you don't need to see me ironing do you I'll show you how to do the bias um, yeah so and I, I was looking for a, a you really ideally you want a square and I would say the smallest for a little project like this the smallest you want to go is about eight inches square and we're gonna join them just because I don't this is not 12, it's not going to be a 12 inch piece, so we're going to join two pieces together. And because it's cotton, it's going to press really nicely. And um, I'm going to probably spray starch it at some point just to give it a little bit of body. So let's go on the overhead. <laughs> right, I've uh, ironed my scrappy piece. Look, honestly, you couldn't get more scrappy than that. I do apologise. But actually, it's perfect. When I show you the other side, show you the purse, there is that little bit in there, look. 
it's perfect when it's cut on the diagonal it'll look fab right so we don't need the mat just yet now then in the instructions it says that your bias must be three eighths of an inch once it's folded once it's turned over i was going to see if i could find my original bit but i can't let me bring let me bring betty in. let me just um detach her from kylie keely sorry well done so it's quite narrow it's quite narrow yeah so this is three eighths of an inch so you actually want to start off with the piece one and a half inches wide okay now i'm going to cut mine a little bit bigger um, because I like to trim mine back a little bit okay so that might sound a bit weird but if you're cutting this yourself and you're confident and you're happy and everything else you want a strip one and a half inches wide then we're going to fold it in until we get to the three eighths of an inch okay but I'm, I'll do it so you can see so I've got my, my uh, cutting ruler and I've also got a rotary cutter so I'm just going to fold this over um, point to point. So I'm going to, which way did I think I was going to go? That way. So even though I've got a real scrap, can you see that's my scrappy bit? Yeah. If I fold this over, um, I'm going to cut sort of here and then travel along that bit. Yeah. I probably only need two pieces, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. So I folded this once. That's all I need to do because it's such a scrappy bit. And, you know, if you want to put your folded edge on a straight line on your mat um, and then you're going to use your your ruler. I mean, this is rather big, but no, I'll live with it. I'm going to have to just turn it slightly for me. And this is where, look, can you see where the, my rubbishy bit is there? So I'm going to start there. And I'm just going to make sure that all my red lines are sitting on top of the white. So it gives me an absolute 90 degree angle here. Yeah, happy? Yes, deliriously. So I'm just going to cut like that. And that's that really is scrap. Although I have to say, that'll go back in the box for crumb quilting. So I'll pop it to one side. Now I'm going to cut mine at one and three quarter inches only because I want to join them and trim them back. Um, and you might think that's really odd, but I quite like to do that. So there's one. And then here's another. Okay. And then we'll even cut this tiny little piece here, just in case I need it. I don't know if I do or don't. So although it seems really crazy to use such a small piece, um, in actual fact, you know, you end up with beautiful um, pieces of bias binding yeah um, perhaps, pr might be enough in fact if I put these two together that needs cutting let's just cut that uh, I want to make sure that in fact no, I'm going to put it on straight and then I'll know what I'm doing I don't want to get confused um, so actually those two pieces together are going to be big enough I'm pretty sure so this little tiny bit I'll put in my scrap box so we're going to join this one to this one and how we do that, I'm going to do it like that, is that we just do it square on. So when I say square on, you're going to do it at a, a 90 degree angle. Um, and then we're going to stitch along there. If you had a straight edge there, just a minute. <laughs> I forget that if you haven't done bias before, you might get a little bit confused. Um, you want to be able to cover there so you've got a quarter of an inch underneath here when you put that back so that when we stitch along here it'll fold back beautifully let me just show you if i put a pin there and then fold this back we'll have a perfect um bias uh join so i'm going to pop that under the machine um, what I'll do is I'll go to the front camera because you really don't need to see me just do a little seam because we're going to come back to the, the cutting board again in just a second. Let's just move that out of the way. So, like I said, um, I would say that a 8 inch square on a small project is really as small as you can go because you'll just end up with a lot of seams, which is all right, you know, um, and with bias you hardly see seams 
Um, and if you want to draw this 45 degree angle, please draw it. Um, I've got so used to seeing it, I, it doesn't, uh, you know, I don't get flummoxed by it. Once you've stitched that, that's what it looks like. Yeah? Obviously right sides together. You're just going to trim it and then we'll, we'll go back to the overhead and you can see what I do next. So I'm trimming it back to about an eighth of an inch, I suppose. Right. Are we okay? Are we keeping up? Are you totally confused? <laughs> Did anybody join me yesterday on the Christmas decoration workshop? That was such fun. It was really a couple of hours of real good fun. We've got a now a smooth version on YouTube, which I've put onto the uh, event, which is secret, as you know. Um, but it, it ended up being really lovely. And John did a cracking job at, uh, at the editing um, yesterday. He, he, he did it yes, last night. I said, don't, don't do it tonight, love. Have a, have a rest, because he's always doing stuff for me. He said, no, no, I'll do it now. So look, I've um, pressed the seam. Now, if you want to, you can press that seam open. I'm not too too fussed, um, but that's what my bias looks like. So you can see why I like to trim it because I I never seem to get them lined up. You might be absolutely perfect at it, in which case, hurrah! Um, anyway, so we need the um, the ironing mat back in a minute. So I'm just lining those up together. So I'm literally putting one on top of the other. I'm making sure that they're all sitting beautifully and I'm going to trim one side don't forget we've got a tiny amount to play with so just keep everything steady now don't forget this rotating mat is on my my Amazon shop so if I was to have unlocked it just one moment because it has a locking device under here Hold on, let me just unlock it. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I've unlocked it. There we go. Um, this is fab, look. So <laughs> it swivels round. It's like a lazy Susan. It's lovely. And it's they are on my Amazon shop. So now we're going to trim that down now to that one and a half. So I don't care about this side. I don't care how much I trim off this side. Okay, all I want to make sure is that I get one and a half. And then look at that, I've now got the most beautiful piece of bias. So although it's a little bit more extra work, it's so worth it. So worth it. That's lovely now. So I'm rather hoping I don't need any more than that. If I do, I can always join. I just need to lock that. Um, I can always join that back on again. Uh, you know, the other little piece. That's fine. I'm not bothered. Uh, or I can make a smaller loop. It's no bother. So wrong sides together fold in half and press that center fold okay it's just so you've got a fold going along here now beautifully if it slips like it just did give it tell it what to do just go back to it so just carry on you can do make more of this if you're at all anxious that you're not going to have enough Please don't be anxious about anything. Um, make more. You don't have to be as as uh, as, as a sort of um, you know Scrooge like. <laughs> I was trying to think of a better word. So now what I'm doing, I'm pressing my outer raw edges to that fold line. And this is quite a useful thing to to um, learn how to do because then you can always make bias out of the fabric that you're you're working with and um, it just makes everything look very professional and it all matches or you can do contrast you know dots with stripes and stripes with dots and flowers and geometrics you know you can you can sort of you know ring the changes if you like and so you can do that easily when you're making it yourself so now you're bringing the other long raw edge up to roughly meet the middle. Don't get too hung up about it. You can, of course, use a bias maker, of which there are so many on the market. Um, I particularly love the Sasha tools, um, but it's like everything. Um, uh, I never think about it until the last minute, and then it's always too late. 
but the sasha tools are excellent so now what you're going to do is so you've got your two long raw edges into the center so now what you're going to do is just fold it um, in half again so you've got a beautiful beautiful piece of um, bias binding and you do need bias you do need bias because it's such a curvy curvy betty is curvy betty is curvy now talking of betty i was going to tell you the reason why i called her betty i was just loading her up onto the website um to to actually edit and, and put together the pattern for you before kath get hold of it and um as i was doing that um um and a lady called Betty just put her order in for the uh, what's it called the Mabel Mabel the label Hold on. she just ordered um, it was like last week so when it was free um, and she just put her order in to download and and as I was thinking oh what shall I call the little purse um, up came Betty I won't give you a whole name up came Betty's name and I thought ah let's let Let's call it Betty. <laughs> That's the reason why she's called Betty. It's good enough reasons, any, isn't it? So we're just um, I'm just trimming off the end so it's nice and square. Can you see? <laughs> square, square end. And we're just going to start attaching our bias. We don't have to worry about the purse because it's all in one bit. So let's just um, put that on the overhead so we can see what we're doing. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're going to overhang by a half an inch. So the side with the um, slider is going to be the slide that has the loop. So this is the side that has the little overhang of half an inch. It doesn't matter hugely, but it's just it, it just seems to work better if you hold the loop and pull the, the zip slider. It seems to make sense. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to overhang by half an inch. And I'm just going to put my raw edge, I'm going to open it up, can you see? I'm opening it up, I'm putting my raw edge to the raw edge of my purse. And there's a lovely picture in the pattern that shows this. I want you to be really, really careful about this because if you don't get your raw edges sitting nicely together, then it'll start to look clunky. It's such a small thing, it needs to be neat. So I need you to take a little bit of time over this, okay? Don't want you to rush it. Don't want you to think, oh, go on, I've got to go and pick up the kids from school. Let's quickly finish it. No. Put it to one side, finish it tomorrow. <laughs> so pin it all the way round and do do this. You know, as I start to stitch this, all these pins will come out, but do do this. It's really worth it. See, look, I have plenty. There's tiny little scraps. It's amazing. So that tiny little scrap of fabric has made enough bias easily for this project. Look at that, I'm quite amazed actually. Because you never think you've got enough and then you've got ridiculous amounts. So I've pinned it all the way around. I've opened it up. I'm not bothered about this bit, not bothered about that bit, but I've pinned it all the way around and I'm going to stitch in the fold. I'll bring it up further to the camera when we're, we're ready to, to rock and roll. So I'm just also, while I'm here, I'm going to cut my Cut my uh, end off. Let's just give it a bit more than four inches. <coughs> right, and of course that little scrap can be used for crumb quilting. So there we are. So that's, uh, I'm just making sure we're, we're up to where we want to be. Yep. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is pop this under the machine and I'm going to stitch in the fold. Okay, so when if I bring it up to show you, if you can see that fold line there, yeah, that's where we're stitching. We're not stitching here, we're not stitching here, we're stitching in the fold, in the fold. So take your stitch length down to two. Okay, does everybody hear that? Because <laughs> I know I'm shouting now. Let me just switch the camera, just a sec. <clears throat> so you need to take your stitch length down to two because we're stitching a very, very small curve. 
okay we're gonna I'm gonna start whoops I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna stitch in that fold just make sure that your raw edges are sitting on top of each other yeah so that sits just there good and you're going to stitch on a stitch length of two <laughs> just in case you didn't hear me the first time so let's just uh, get going on that just be careful as you go over your zip be respectful of your machine now because I'm taking my pins out I'm going to use my stiletto if you haven't got a stiletto you need one speak to Trisha Boyd message Trisha Boyd she'll get you one and your stiletto is like your third hand but it gets right close up to your needle and it's absolutely the thing you need the best it's your bestest friend it when father christmas says to you what do you want for christmas it's just it's just one stiletto so not a pair <laughs> just the one <laughs> Now, because even though we've pinned it, you might have to adjust as you go. You don't want any creases. And the other thing is, which is quite useful to know, you could actually, I'm going to, I, I am going to take these pins out, guys, because they drive me potty. Um, if you wanted to, you know where the crease is? Let me just get my pen. You could, if you wanted to, draw... A line in that crease let me just do it and then show you we won't need it on the tail but you'll see it on the fabric can you see I've drawn that line in the crease and if you can't see that crease when you're stitching because the light may be but you will see the drawn line so it's a good little tip so like I say keep your raw edges nice and neat that really wants to fold there so I'm Keeping my eye on it, I don't want to crease. Keep your raw edges together and just make your way round slowly, slowly. Do a little bit like me. This is why I said to you, don't um, say, oh, let's quickly get it finished. No, nope, you've got to take your time. Just make you sure your raw edges are sitting nicely, that you're following that line if you drew it or the fold if you didn't. Like I say, pin it well. I would say quilting clips are a little bit clumsy for this. By all means, try if you want to. Let's get the zip slider out of the way. <clears throat> and then just make your way up to the top. And that this, po this um, stiletto is doing an absolutely cracking job. Okay, so there we are. So I've whoops, see, so I've stitched it all the way around. Doesn't it look lovely? <laughs> and then all you're going to do is push that over to the other side. And because it's bias, it will go. And also, it will always benefit from. Sorry, it'll always benefit from a, a press, but we'll, we'll not bother at the moment. Okay, so I think that's looking rather lovely. So now we've got to tackle how we turn this end. This end is okay, and you'll, you'll see that when we get to it. But this end you might find a little tricky, so I'm going to show you. Even though it's in the, in the pictures, I'll show you live, and then if perhaps it will make more sense. Who knows? Hopefully it does. Right, so let's, uh, let's get our little overhead ready for you. Okay. You see that okay so I folded my bias over to the other side so this is the good side I've just stitched and if you want to give it a press looks great doesn't it but this is the side where we need to tidy up and, and we need to top stitch now I do like I said I do recommend a hand stitch here guys because it's um, this is quite fiddly this bit so I want you to think about your own capabilities. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this end over like that. Okay. So I'm going to put a pin in so my big fat fingers are out of the way. Right. 
so that's our first bit can you see there's the folded edge and I've just folded that little bit over there so I've, I've really made a nice neat end to that so you'll see this sorry you'll see this lovely end when you come to stitch it it looks really neat but I would um, like I say it depends how many you want to make but really this benefits from a hand stitching but as you as you know I, I've um, I machine stitch my original one okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to then keep it like that but we're going to fold over this bit here so we're following the lines that we've already created you know the fold lines and if you have a little end sticking out like there just poke that in so you've got a lovely lovely crispy start and I would be very aware if your machine is capable now of going through all those layers it's quite a bit going on there. there's a lot of zippage zip tape folded fabric uh, interfacing um, and then you're just going to fold it on the lines that you've already created and you're just going to pin it and it kind of wants to do it itself anyway really just tuck it under and you might want to you know where we stitched before you might want to sort of cut that down with pink and shears maybe um, that's, that's up to you uh, I mean it's, it should fold if you've done your quarter of an inch etc or well no sorry um, stitching in the fold which is three eighths it should be fine but by all means um, I trim it back there's no rules here certainly not oops that's a big pin no it's not yes it is we don't want a big pin want these little fine pins I've ordered some more from Father Christmas. He's very good, my Father Christmas, found my way. Yeah. He said, what do you want, Lizzie? And I said, I'd like some more fine pins, please. OK, he said, shall I get them from your shop? Yes, certainly, please. That would be very kind of you. So that's what he's done. What he's doing. Well, if that's what he's told me. Who knows what's going to be under the tree? So look, there we are. So do you see where that's just come a drift from the stitching there? As I go around, I will pull that over with my stiletto to make sure I'm, I'm stitching where I want to be. I don't want to see the stitching that I've just done. So I'm going to kind of pull it over. So then we've got this bit. So with this bit, you want to fold it on the lines that you've pressed. Now, if you've used really good um, quilting cotton, those creases will stay. This is actually a fine tarna lawn. So it really, really does have has no intentions of staying where I've told it to. So I'm going to just put a pin about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch away from my zip. Let me just do that properly. About three quarters of an inch away from my zip, yeah? And I'm just going to pin it, pin just once more. <clears throat> so I would be really cautious of your sewing machine, and if you if it's capable, this is why I changed my throat plate because I didn't want it to this fabric, fine fabric, to sink into my feed dogs. And what you're going to do is come up to this other end, and this is a raw, this is a raw edge, yeah, raw edge and that gets tucked into there okay so just pop it in there now if you want to use some glue use some quilters tape you know anything that you want to make that work for you so there is your loop now your your raw edges are sitting inside there beautifully tucked away so um, nothing is showing in, and you know what I'm like, I'm going to take those pins out in a minute but I'm going to attempt to stitch that on my machine we'll see how we get on because it's different fabrics react in different ways so let's just move you around let's move you around there we go get me, get me spaceship in there we go oops sorry 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 let's just move it back a bit so you can see <coughs> So um, obviously, let me show you from this way as well. Look, there you go. So that end is just literally tucked in there. 
and the pin is holding it but I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching here I'm going to start stitch well about here I'd say so I catch that in there I'm not going to go right across that'd be ugly so I'm going to start about an eighth of an inch in sixteenth of an inch in and I'm going to catch that and then I'm going to start stitching round here. It's not easy guys and that's why I'm saying hand stitching this if, you, if, you, if you're capable of doing hand stitching. I know some people have dexterity problems, see how you get on. But glue it! Don't, don't worry, get some fabric glue and just glue it. There you go. And so I'm going to start stitching here and using my stiletto it's going to help me hold this all in place. I'm going to work my way around come down here again you see like I'm going to catch it in there and then I'm going to work around the purse okay and that's it it, it sounds really complicated because I'm going on about it but it's really not it's just I want you I want always I want you to know if there's little bits that you need to be super cautious about and that's one of them so let's just get that lined up so I'm going to use my stiletto to hold everything in place. Hopefully it will behave itself. Put my foot down. Do a little stitch. I'm going to get my foot on the uh, foot pedal. Now look, that's, how, that's held it now. But all what I've got to do is work my way around this loop. There's no way I'm going to have these pins there. So this is the bit where I want you to be super cautious take your time you still got it on a little stitch so it's not going to go super fast because it's just a little stitch i'm still on two but do do a tiny little bit and work your way round just take your time have a cup of tea hold on a minute have a little drop of sherry <laughs> probably afterwards <laughs> and just take your time if it's a quick fast job I'll tell you if it's a slow careful little job I'll tell you otherwise you'll say you never said Lizzie and I'll say, oh, bloomin did I oh, bloomin said yes take your time I said I said <laughs> Try and make sure that all your layers are caught. Right, we're coming up to where we started. So I'm just going to cut my thread so we don't all um, chew that all up. And now we're going to work our way around. There we go. Here we go. So now, that's my bit of bias. So if you hear it clunking. So now we're going over the zip. So be careful. Take your time. I'm going to keep those pins in. I'm using my stiletto to keep it exactly where I want it to be. Don't don't stitch great big seams here, guys. Try and keep it super neat. Don't rush it. This is why I said hand stitching is good for this, but I know not everybody can do hand stitching. I appreciate that. But all your machines, whatever level they are, however much you paid for them, We'll all stitch this perfectly fine. You just got to take your time. And we're just coming up to eight o'clock, so that's not bad. There we go. So now we're coming up to that little corner. Do you see? Let me pop that out of the way. Okay, so we're just coming up to that little corner there and I'm going to keep my pin there for as long as possible because that's holding that lovely, lovely square end, that really neat end. Be careful of your zip and then little back stitch. There we go, just trim that. There we go. That's another Betty. She's sweet, sweet, isn't she? And I was just thinking she would look lovely with a little bit of antique lace on her. And uh, you can see how neat the machine is. And because we've kept it on a size two length stitch, 
it really is a really really neat job and if we turn it around and look yet that's not bad look <laughs> phew and you can see look how that is attached in there beautifully so it's a really nice neat way and because we the way we folded our bias at the end it's a lovely neat end you can't see any zip or raw edges or anything like that ah oh, i love that fabric looks so sweet doesn't it so jill jill who's just said so sweet jill is our guest designer next week i don't know if you know it's next week jill but it is <laughs> so uh anyway there we are so that's betty that's project uh, 55 can you believe hold on let me get you on the front 55 can you believe how how that time has gone i mean it's obviously it's well over the year now i can't remember when we first started but we did a few <clears throat> and then we had a little break for christmas time and then we started up again anyway there we are so that is betty betty's lovely she's online like i said before but of course if you want to line her line her but she's so little you don't want to be adding any more bulk to her really so we've got two versions now we've got the little yellow version and we've got the little can't really see let me get out of the way and uh, pop her there oh no it doesn't make any difference there i'll put it in my on the black my black top <laughs> can't get the staff right lovely to see you it's been a great hour again as always i will now go and uh, pick a pick a name from youtube and facebook and uh, for the winner because i'm assuming you've all been commenting for the kim porter kit so the rules were say anything so if you've never ever commented on a youtube or a facebook before now is your time just say hello i don't need you to say anything else and you could be in with a chance to win and the more times you say it the more times you say something the more chances that you'll get to win this little prize of a Kim Porter kit. Oh, I was going to show you, wasn't I? Quick, 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 let me show you. I'm sure you, some of you might have seen it before. But this is the contents of Kim's kit. So you always get a little postcard to say it's from Kim Porter. There we go, that's what it looks like. And then we have a right old assortment of stuff. So some hessian, some lace, some buttons, old uh, shirting. A lot of this is doubled up, so I don't think they're small. Well, they are, they are small bits, but they're great for crumb quilting. Um, bit of um, Liberty Tarna lawn there, look, beautiful. And here, Liberty. Bit of shirting, tablecloth, bedding. Um, that's probably bedding as well. Bit of old shirting. Just some gorgeous stuff, some Liberty here. So this is just an example of what you might get because they're all different. They're all different. A oh, little bit of Liberty. There we are. It's even got Liberty written on it so you so you know it is. Bit of shirting, bit of, bit of all sorts, look. Some tubings. Now this is vintage lace. Um, I know that, she's talked to me about it. Um, some shirting or dress fabric with um, crochet on there so you could attach that to something beautiful. Some string, some little bit of chambray and some vintage buttons. So that's what's in the kit, this particular Kim Porter kit. But they're all, like I said, they're all a little bit different. So you won't necessarily get that, but you'll get something equally as gorgeous. Um, for instance, um, this one is this one is going to Susan Palmer. When I get my act together tomorrow, that's going out to Susan because she was our member of the month in the gold group. Um, so that's going out to Susan. And I'll put it on my machine, Susan, so I trip over it when I go out of the room. Right. Um, good night, everybody. Been lovely having your company. It's been absolutely super. I've so enjoyed making the project. So much so. I'm going to be back next week with another one. And it'll be MIM56. Don't know what it's called yet. J Jill has got to tell Kath what it's called <laughs> it's got to have a name jill it's got to have a name perhaps we should call it jill yeah if you don't get in touch with kath it'll end up being called jill <laughs> right i'll see you again next week bye everybody bye